Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. Um, in today's video, I wanted to talk a bit about my experience with Peniter pens. So I have three Peniters here. I have a Peniter La Grande Belletza mystery filler, and this is the black Russian color. I have a Peniter Avatar UR or Ultra Resin, and I have a Peniter Alchemist in Stromboli. So up front, I will say that I am loving all three of these pens. Um, for these last two, it was a rough, very rough start with these pens. I had a few little issues with those, but my issues with this pen was mostly due to me not understanding the pen and not uh, taking the time to get used to this pen. But these two had some nib issues that I will uh, talk about. I'm going to try not to come off as being too critical or too negative when it comes to Perniter, but I am going to be very honest about my experience, especially with these two. So um, I'll start off with the, the box and get that out of the way. This is the outer box, and that's for these two pens. These two, the La Grande Bellezza and the Alchemist came in a similar box. This came in a little bit less flashy of a box, but this is the outer box. For the inner box you have this kind of a desk shape and it just says Peniter Forense 1774 and you just have your your sleeve here the the pen was sitting in here and you have your I guess this is warranty information it's Peniter Forense information about the pen Some technical information, and this is for the Stromboli or the Alchemist Stromboli. Uh, I'm not sure about the warranty on this, but this talks mostly about the material that it's made of. It's kind of a um, kind of a take on the um, the uh, I'm drawing a blank. The Visconti Homo Sapiens. This is made out of uh, zeolite, which is um, kind of a it's also kind of a um, volcanic or rock material mixed with resin. So zeolites are minerals of volcanic origin that formed millions of years ago. So they do mix kind of a um, lava and resin, which is very similar to um, the Homo sapiens. And it also comes with some stationery. And the La Grande Belletza in particular also came with, came with an inkwell, but the box is very similar to this one. So enough about the box. I'll talk a little bit about the La Grande Belletza. This is a beautiful pen. I bought this from Emmy at Pen Venture. Um, I bought this, I've had this for, for quite a while, um, considering I guess it's kind of relative. My fountain pen journey hasn't been very long, but this was one of the uh, first expensive pens that I bought. And so this is uh, number 144 of 888. And as the name implies, it's a mystery filler. So it's just a piston filler that um, locks in place when it's in the down position. And you can actually turn it when it's in the up position. So there's no accidentally um, twisting your piston knob like some pins. So um, so you can see here there's a, well, if you can see there's a, I should use my other camera so you can see it up close. There's some indentations there, kind of a, I guess a trellis if that's the right word. And then you have the nib and this is a quill nib, so it's a flexi nib. Just a beautiful rose gold, so you can see all the inner workings. Very beautiful pen. So I don't have very many issues with this pen. Uh, you can see it's a it's a magnetic cap, and it also posts when it posts. It posts magnetically. Um, the only issues that I had with this pen, um, one was when you fill this normally you will get some ink down here so if you don't clean it pro properly you will get ink all over your hands but 
again, that was an issue with me just not doing what I should have. It comes with a inkwell. If you're not familiar with the inkwell, this is an inkwell. This is actually the Visconti inkwell. I don't have the Pnider one, but all you do is just stick your pen down in here and then turn it upside down and fill it up. So when I put this in the Pnider inkwell, it doesn't get to this point. So it keeps this part dry. So you can either use the inkwell or you can just rinse this off or just be careful not to get this too far down in the in the ink bottle. So that was on me. Also the, the nib. Um, the good thing about buying from Pinventure is that Emmy does test and tune all the nibs before it leaves him. So the actual function of the nib was fine. It's just when I would write with it because it's so flexy I just that's what that's how I wanted to write all the time I just wanted to keep writing with pressure 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 and I didn't know how to write with this normal so I was like I don't know how all I want to do is press hard press hard press hard and it was just a matter of me learning to go back and forth between uh, hard pressure and soft now the one quality issue with this pen was and I've refer I've talked a little bit about this in my currently inked video, one of my curling videos, is that this has, uh, the top finial has a piece of foil um, there and the foil actually came, I don't, I don't think it was, I'm not sure if it was glued down, but it came loose and I would keep, you know, folding it over and pressing it back down, but then it would come loose again. So I finally just super glued it. I'm not sure what Penider was doing with this, but uh, once I super glued it, I haven't had any issues with that. But for a pen this price, you know, you don't really expect that, but little things like that happen. But I haven't had any issues with this pen um, really since. So it's been pretty good going, goings with this pen once I just got kind of got used to it. So, all right. So this is Penider La Grande Bellezza and that means the great beauty or big beauty uh, mystery filler. And it's the Black Russian. I think they have a sugar or I'm not sure if it's sugar or white Russian which is a like a silver I think it's more of a silver uh, trimmed um, pen but this the the black Russian is rose gold and black the ink that I have in here is Birmingham Pen Company Bowler Steam and Bowler Steam is pretty much the ink that I've I've kept in this so Bowler Steam is just a nice deep blue with a little green and again this is a um, this is a fine and it's a 14 karat gold quill or flex nib and you can see the flex And in reverse, it does work in reverse. So that's the Pinata La Grande Bellezza. Um, I think this was about, I want to say $700. Quite expensive, but um, all in all, a very good pen. So when the next one is the Penida Avatar UR or Ultra Resin. So Penida, they really pride themselves on making a pen that didn't use any glue as well as this being practically indestructible. Now there are a couple of YouTube videos where people are hammering it and I think there's another video of someone taking it to the gun range and shooting it and it does of course come apart but for daily wear and tear, 
you know, dropping it, um, like a hard drop, it is pretty much indestructible. And I've been carrying this around in my pen case and there are no scuffs or anything on it. A lot of times with these matte finished pens, you'll get a, a scuff or something. But other than my fingerprints, there's really uh, nothing on this pen. Like the La Grande Belletta, they both have this springy quill clip. So this also has a springy, very easy to use clip. And again, it's a uh, magnetic. And the good thing about this one is that the, the magnet is quite a bit stronger than the, the magnet on the La Grande Belletta. It does post nicely. It doesn't post uh, with a magnetic. It's kind of friction fitted as far as the posting goes. But all in all, both of these are fairly light pens. Um, very comfortable, whether posted or not, to write with. But, um, and this is a cartridge converter. And this is their converter. They, for some reason, thought it was a good idea to put this ink level on it. I'm not sure how useful that is, but um, I can appreciate it. And here's the nib. It's a steel nib. And this is a fine nib. This pen came in my Truffet um, collector's box. So I was very happy to see this in the box, but you know, once I started writing with it, um, it never hard started or stopped. It was just extremely dry. So I spent probably um, a couple months going back and forth with this pen. I changed the ink and um, I said, hey, I'm gonna put writer's blood in it. And writer's blood is a very wet ink. So if writer's blood is not gonna work, then, you know, something's wrong. So I used the, the brass shims in it and like I said, I went back and forth for months using the brass shims and then getting frustrated and stopping. And then one day I'm, I just said to myself, you know, it's, it's well past the time to send it back. I don't like returning things anyway. So I said, I'm going to sit down and I'm not going to stop until I get this fixed. And so after about 10 to 15 minutes of, you know, using the brass shims, finally something clicked and it just started writing so nicely and this pencil this pen has a pencil like uh, the pencil like graphite filling to it which I really enjoy and uh, a few pens here and there but if you look closely here what actually clicked was if you look at the end of the nib a piece of the coating actually came off so when I saw that, I was just like, excuse my language, WTF, Peniter. Like how in the world can you let this leave your factory without testing and, see, and noticing that you have actually glued the ties together with this paint or this coating? Like how could you not you put so much pride into the construction of your pens, but you didn't actually check the nib, which is really the most important part of the pen, I would think. And so I was like, this can, I wonder if this was just me. So I went and started looking for reviews. And um, the best place for reviews I noticed was Goulet Pens. And lo and behold, there are a lot of people complaining about this particular model being dry the tines being too tight. And so I was like, well, this is not only me, which is a shame. And I think it was a stationary dev. He has a La Grande Belletza or Rococo or Rocco or something like that. It looked quite a bit more expensive than this. And he also has the black nib. And if you watch his video, the same thing happens to him, except that his um, coating came off on the bottom. So I was just kind of dumbfounded. I just can't believe, you know, we're, uh, whatever. But anyway, this is the Pinata. And I do love this pen nail. Pinata Avatar. You are. 
and the ink in here is let me zoom in a bit uh, the ink in here is as I said diamond you see how nicely it writes writer's blood and it's this is a fine steel nib a fine steel nib that's coated with some kind of uh, I don't know if this is paint or what do you want to call it but it's a firm nib no line weight variation um, it writes it always wrote nicely in reverse I never had an issue with it in reverse because I guess on the top is where the the problem was but um and this, uh, like I said, came in my Trufe box. So this pen is like, I want, I want to say like one in the mid 100s. Uh, usually I have my prices down, but I didn't really want to focus on price as much as, as quality today. So what my recommendation for, if you're interested in one of the avatars is to uh, try it out or buy it from someone that checks their nibs before it leaves um, their warehouse so lastly and these are in the order that I bought them and they're also in the order of most frustration so this pen was like 250 I got this on sale at pen savings and again this is uh, made out of zeolite and resin zeolite is a type of uh, lava or volcanic ash and if you're not familiar with um, Dante Del Vecchio, he worked or owned or was the head of uh, Visconti. So he's well experienced and well versed in using uh, volcanic material. Um, so this actually does feel quite a bit like the Homo sapiens. Um, this, they both have kind of a rubbery feel to them. Um, but this one is not quite as dry as the Homo sapiens, but it does have a good feel to it. So when I got this out of the box, I was like, wow, that is a, a beautiful pen, which is why I bought it. Because, you know, it's beautiful. It does have a nice springy clip. And it has this odd yin and yang pattern there at the, at the top of the finial, at the top finial. And this, I didn't know about it when I bought it. Um, I just assumed it was engraved, but this is actually a sticker, which is, I don't know, that was odd to put on a pen um, this pr at this price. All of these are engraved, you know, these are engraved, this is engraved. Um, I'm not sure why they went with the sticker. And again, this pen is uh, also uses the glueless. And I after I got this I went on Goulet.com to check out the reviews and I saw someone complaining about the sticker which I was like well yeah I kind of agree with that but I didn't pay attention so I'm not going to complain about it and someone else had a picture of theirs where it just fell apart this infinial just came apart and again I'm not sure why they insist on doing the glueless thing I mean I'm assuming that some pieces need to be glued um, I, I love glue you know I find it very useful if you notice any of my videos where I'm fixing up something I'm always super gluing something so um, I don't really know what their fascination fascination is with um, using glueless technology um, but it seems like it's you're just asking for something to fail so again it's a cartridge converter filler they also have a version of this that has a piston filler that I want so bad but I'm thinking you know after all this do I really want another one but I really do love these pens and I'm afraid I am going to end up getting another one I, I know I am um, so this one the complaint was again the nib uh, same issue as with the avatar you are it, the tines were just tight 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 and man I, I said I'm not going to do the same thing that I did with the avatar I'm going to actually sit down and fix it I didn't didn't even consider 
sending it back because it's not something I do. I figure I can fix anything. Um, but I was, I was very close to breaking this because I was getting so frustrated. And I'll show you the, the paper that I went through. So just, just testing this nib, testing this nib, going back and forth, loosening it, tightening it. Loosening it, tighten it. There's another piece of paper. Changing inks. Just changing inks. Just more, more the same. Thinking that I got it and finding out, no, I don't have it. And just wasting paper. Finally, I, I was starting to bend the nib so the nib was kind of getting misshapen so I was like okay you have to calm down and just think this through so I couldn't find my shims um, so I, I you know I used the brass sheets the brass sheets were just too small so what I did and I don't advise this I used a crafts knife uh, the little um, you know the little knife you use for crafts and um, I widen the tines using that. So this is the, the nib. And it was just tight, 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 tight. And so I used the utility knife to widen the tines. Luckily, I didn't break it. Um, but this, like the La Grande Bellezza, has the magnetic. Unfortunately, when you post it, it's pretty strong here. But when you post it, you know, it, it holds, but it's very, it's not strong at all. Um, but I really don't write with the post-it, so that's okay. So I'm just going to show you here. And the tines, I think, are still a little bit wonky. So I do have to go back and straighten those out. So... I use a utility knife and then I smooth it out with some some micro mesh. And the ink that I have in here is Leonardo blue. And this is a this is a, this is a fine steel. And a uh, reverse. It's okay in reverse. It does write very well now. I'm I'm content with them. Um, so my main takeaway, at least for these two pens, is to make sure you order them from someone that again checks their nibs before it leaves their warehouse or go somewhere where you can try them out or just stay away from them um, this one really no 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 issues other than the the fall coming up there so that's pretty much all I wanted to say and rant on about the Peniter. I really do like Peniters. I, I do. Um, I think they're beautiful pens and I'm always tempted when I see one. But the experience with these two, wow. I don't know. But just wanted you to be aware, not to uh, be negative against Peniter or anything, but just wanted to make you aware um, about the QC of these pens. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope you're all doing well. And I will catch you next time. Take care.